and knee slice our way to the mat. Just like that. We catch you in half guard, and we're going to back step over. All right, so from here, hands to the floor. We back step over, catch his leg. So see, I pinch. All right, so it's back step to here, but now look, pinch. So it's not back step, fall. Go do that, right? So we back step and pinch out, squeeze our knees. Now, if, if this leg is floating around in space, which is not going to happen most of the time, because he knows at this point, I and mean before this point, he knows I'm going for that, so he will cover that leg with the other foot, yeah, to protect it. But let's say he's floating around. Do you understand that we now have the exact same thing that we just had? Is everyone clear on that? So the first one we do, just Pat will just have his leg floating around and we're just going to end up doing it. That's exactly, the, exactly what we just did on the other side, by backstepping. So what's the one advantage of backstepping out of the half guard or quarter guard over going around the Toriander? What's the one big advantage? I didn't have to, I didn't have to make the whole, I didn't have to upgrade. I was upgraded the second I backstepped. Do you, I, are we clear on that? So you didn't have to, you were, you were upgraded. You just got straight into that better car. So you're here, we're back stepping, pinching, Patrick's legs free, that's awesome. Down we go, and then we're, we're into it. So we'll do one like that. And then what we're gonna do, and we could have done it the other side. I'm just kind of feeding it in slowly. The next thing we're gonna do is upgrade to what I call the American knot. No one else calls it that. I just call it the American knot because I, I want to make a distinction between the Russian knot, which we did last time, and this one of doing it. So without confusing anyone, well, hopefully I'm hoping not. If I have Patrick's leg, just so you know where the knot comes in, there are three different positions for the legs. One, what's this called? Basic, Basic ashy. Any ideas for this? Outside, Outside, Outside ashy. And any ideas for that? Inside ashy. Right now, but I've got what kind of leg control do I have over Patrick? It's it's called outside. I don't know why, but that the, the, everyone in the PJ community has kind of agreed on, for once on, on the lexicon here, and that is outside. And Pat left one under my right arm. Okay, so if you want to upgrade, so that's three basic foot positions. Okay, there's two more. Peripheral. Those three are the core. These two are peripheral positions, meaning like the icing on the cake. So if I've got outside the control on Pat, the icing on the cake is the Russian knot, which ties him up in a way where he can't kick me, can't stand up, can't roll, can't disturb me, can't run away. He can tickle my foot. <laughs> that is slightly a little bit, a little bit on the gay side, Pat. <laughs> I'm okay with it. I've got lots of friends in San Francisco, so I'm weirdly okay with it. But it is a good deal. Okay. And your wife's right there, mate. <laughs> So, so here I am, that's called the Russian knot. No. But, but if I had Patrick, same leg, same mm. everything, but if I had Patrick on inside leg control, right? So it's inside now, not outside, same leg, everything. And I find a way to do the same thing, kill that leg. It's so American. It is American. And now I stop my foot and then foot lock in both arching back. So, I don't want to, I don't, don't get bogged down in the details. I'll show you that. And at the end, you'll be all doing that. I just want you to understand. So three main positions, basic ashi, outside ashi, inside ashi, right? And then depending on whether I've got outside or inside control, if it's outside, I kill the other leg with a Russian knot, we did last time. But if, he's, if I've got inside leg control, I kill the other leg with an American knot. So I call it American knot and Russian knot. And that just makes it neat for me. Three basic positions, and then two icing on the cakes. The end of it, that's the end for him, right? So, does that make sense? I mean, I wish I had a learn, I didn't learn like that. I learned like over 15 years of all different, then of Russian knot, and then I learned Ashi, inside Ashi after that. And then I learned the American knot, and then I learned basic Ashi. I was like, oh my God. But so three positions, and then two. Right, so we're gonna do that American knot now, because today's seminar is inside Ashi. I'll stop speaking because I don't want it to get weird. Okay, so we're stepping in. We're here. We are back stepping and doing what? 
pinching. Now, if this leg was free, I would take it, and we're going to do that one time, and just uh, your hook in. But if it's not free because this other one's there, I'm going to grab that one. I'm going to grab whatever foot is on top. That foot's on top. Thanks, Pat. I'm going to roll back and pull it up like I'm going to footlock it. And by the way, you can footlock it. Nothing wrong with that. Right, but now I'm going to, once I get it up there like a footlock, we're going to hold it with our other hand, ignore it, go underneath the other foot, gable. Now, it's, 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 it's a bunch of stuff. One, by, the normal thing is um, triangle. By lifting my hip, you're kind of knee barring that against that leg. So that's irony. You're barring that leg against that leg. But see, I'm up on Pat. If Pat, Pat was taller, he'd help. <laughs> so see, I'm on the shin on Pat. So what I've got to do is I've got to lean back and find Pat's foot. So you see, by arching back, it's foot locking that leg. You see it? So find the foot. On a taller guy, you'll have to way go and find it. On someone that's your own size, it'll be kind of in the right spot. Do you understand? So by arching back, I'm foot locking that. My hip pump and pulling, I'm leg barring that. But here's the thing that'll make it killer. Don't triangle. Because when I pull, you see Pat's hips following me? So like a leg bar, you stand on the guy. So you get foot lock, leg bar, Mexican perceptive guy. <laughs> so you see most of the power is going to come from you standing on him. So there's three things there. All right? Thanks, Pat. The first cool. thing that I worked out when Hedin said to me, don't be leg locking people instead of passing a guard. Because if you just keep doing that, you're gonna get you're getting you're getting addicted to it. You know, he's doing my son's doing that right now. Like, I just want to heel hook you. I didn't see your roll, but did he try to heel hook you? Probably, right? So he's like, I want to heel hook you, but it's not appropriate. Just slap him in the face. I don't care, I want to heel hook you. So you, just, you get you know, you get focused into something. Now that's cool because that's the way you get good at something. You become obsessed with it and do it even when it's not appropriate. <laughs> you, just, you just do it, right? Um, but understand that when you do that, when we get that tunnel vision on end of them, there's a price you pay, and the, and the biggest price you pay is you exclude everything else. You exclude every other possibility when we get over-focused, right? And that can be a problem. The old concept is rat's head, ox's neck. So rat's head means you're looking for all the possibilities. Ox's neck means you're just absolutely focused and will not be stopped. They are both good. Um, but, but there's a, they each have a problem. You know, the rat sees everything but doesn't get anything done. The ox just can't, you can't stop me doing that, but he doesn't see anything, even better things. So, rat said ox is an old concept. That comes from Miyamoto Masashi's Book of Five Rings. Some of you might have heard that. Um, okay, so Hegan said, you're not getting, you're blowing it. Like, you're not, your mount's probably not getting as good. Your side control, your north south is suffering because you're not passing the guard and you're not passing the guard. So, pass the guard and then foot lock him if you want. So, the first thing I did was this. Go swap the arm, come down for walk. So, side control, down there, the neck. So, I'm in side control, I drop down to here, knee ride, and then go back. And head with it. <laughs> so we're going to go knee right, and now look what we do. And now what's that looking like? <laughs> you know, and then, and what if, what if we did a hip bump sweep and ended up on the mount? <laughs> you know, so all paths lead to <laughs> the gelati shopping room. <laughs> um, you see? So... It's just good for us to, you know, this, this, I like this concept too, this all paths lead to whatever you want, right? Just finding lots of ways to get there and just stay uh, on mission on what you want. It actually is pretty good as a way of, you know, what, what Hegan said was if you don't pass the guard, you're losing all this stuff. This adds another element. We're, we're going, all roads lead to this same idea. Okay, so we'll stay inside the trunk. We'll go up to knee right. We'll put our foot in, but only thing when you put your foot in, don't put it in the middle, put your foot in up here because you'll get better leverage to knock that hip down. 
in a little <coughs> gap. So let's go. Thank you. Go I'm at a flagpole. I mean, straighten my right leg out behind Darren's leg. When I straighten my right leg out behind Darren's leg, just my right leg, uh, his leg's going to fall down the floor. So I'm going to stand him up and just do that. And you see, look, look, I got it. Okay. So if this hand underhooked it, where would we where would we we be? X guard, right? So if we overhook it, we're either in three quarter X guard or we're in Ashigurami. Okay, which is which is simpler. Ashigurami is simpler because I don't have to bring it all the way to my shoulder. I just gotta get his leg somewhere between my leg and my arm, grab it, and then do Ashigurami. If you have trouble with this, you've got to do the first Ashigurami drill, which is just standing up there. You just got to do 300 in there, and you'll be cured with it, all problems. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to lift him up, grab it, ashigarami. Got it? Now, the normal ashigarami drill here is the side sweep, right? You know we put pressure like this on his knee to the side, and he falls down. Maybe. I always had trouble with it. Reason is my right elbow. My right elbow is inhibiting my ability to rotate really well. So this is the little modification I come up with. Help me. Left hand. Get it? Right hand on the way. Way more turn. And now my left hand's where? Ready to? Drag that leg and do the whole thing if you want or just hang out here. Okay, so because my left hand's got it, when we take him down, it's ready to drag it across to the inside. So there's two things I like about my way of doing it, which is one, my right elbow's, see it's killed my hip, get it out of the way, hip can turn all the way over, get more hip, and second, th second thing is my left hand's ready to drag it across and put it on the inside, which is, after all, the topic of today. And there we are. Let's go, thanks, Derek.